If you follow Italian football and always seek young innovative coaches in football with distinguished vision, the name of Roberto Di Zerbi probably comes quite high on the list. The 41 year old coach is set to be in charge of Shakhtar Donetsk next season, following his impressive spell at Sassuolo in Serie A. Sassuolo were one of the most exciting teams to watch in the last couple of years since the Zerbi's arrival, with most of their games ending up being spectacular with a lot of turnovers and goal scoring opportunities. This tactical analysis is written by Loriano on the Total Football Analysis site. In this video, we will analyse the tactic briefly, recreate it in Football Manager and check out the results, of course. The team we're going to test this with in Football Manager is of course Shakhtar Donetsk instead of Sassuolo, considering he's now their new manager. So now, let's get stuck into things. His favoured formation is the 4 2 3 1, which is used in efforts for better coverage and whip. One of the fullbacks of the four man defence line would always help with ball progression, while the advanced wide players would also be used as inverted wingers. This is one of the most important traits of his team since both achieves whip but also has players who constantly occupy the penalty area and act as a direct threat. While he wants to have coverage out wide, Sassuolo rarely rely on crossing in their attacking actions. Instead, they use their whip for their build-up and focus their actions in central areas from where they create most of the opportunities. Even more impressive trait of his coaching style is the way he unlocks players' potential. The level of improvement many players have achieved under his guidance is extraordinary and that is why he is a difference maker. Managing to perform at the level with Sassuolo's limited involvement in the transfer market is what makes him one of the most exciting coaches of his generation. De Zerbi highly relies on possession and passing and aim to control the game and allow the opposition less time on the ball. They prefer circulating the ball using short passes and very rely on long balls and direct play in order to advance the ball. The team were third in Serie A when it comes to pass frequency but what is more impressive is their confidence on the ball and their fluidity they achieve. They always aim to build up from the back by circulating the ball between their four men in defence and the double pivot in midfield and then smoothly transition using short passing combinations and a lot of movement for advancing the ball. Manuel Locatelli would often be the key man in ball progression, averaging 77.83 passes per 90 with 90% accuracy and aim to support his teammates attacking actions and deliver the ball in advanced areas. While helping with retaining possession and with ball progression, Sassuolo's fullbacks wouldn't go too high up and would help better with the ball progression rather than actual attacking actions. This leaves the wingers with the responsibility to provide the width in the advanced areas. The midfielders will constantly combine with the centre backs using one touch combinations in effort to break the lines. They aim to drag the players out of position and find pockets which they can use to advance the ball. Then, the attacking players would get the chance to use their skills and penetrate. Sassuolo's usual setup consists of a striker supported by the attacking midfielder from behind and two wide players who would most frequently act as inverted wingers. De Zerbi believes in putting the most effort into attacking actions and often employs many players in the opposition half as possible. Sassuolo were among the teams with the most completed passes to the final third which allows them to create a lot of opportunities throughout the games. The team only used the width provided by the wingers to initiate a lot of movement and combinations in the final third rather than for crossing. De Zerbi relies on the wingers for cutting inside and helping create a movement in the penalty area. That brings more options in front of goal and allows them to both create a direct threat or act as a passing outlet. The team rely on dribbling attempts too in efforts to hold onto the ball and break through defences. The main players who are responsible for that are the wide players who bring more explosiveness with their ball control and help the team be more efficient in the final third. The main player responsible for the actions in front of goal is the striker. Intelligent movement in the penalty area is a crucial part of the Zerbu's successful attacking strategy. The striker must smartly anticipate both his teammates and the opposition's movement which makes the striker very efficient in front of goal. As it happens, with most attacking minded teams, their over commitment to the advanced areas often comes at the expense of their defensive performance. Focusing on the attacking actions and occupying the opposition's half often results in easily being exposed on the counter. It often leaves empty spaces and causes defensive disorganisation, making it harder for the team to employ their marking strategy and defensive structure. Whenever they need to trouble their opponent's build-ups, they do try to press in the advanced areas but don't get too carried away with their pressing too high. Berardi, Locatelli and Bolga were the players to put in their efforts into recovering the ball on the edge of the final third most frequently. 
They also aim to intercept the ball occasionally, trying to keep the ball out of the defensive third. While their movement back when caught cool on the counter isn't well measured, they are pretty successful in their physical challenges and win a high percentage of their defensive duels. What's even more impressive is the low numbers of committed fouls. That helps them in stealing the ball from the opposition and transitioning in attack as quickly as possible. Their pressing strategy is quite intense and they don't allow a lot of time on the ball to their opponent. That is confirmed by their PPDA of 8.88, meaning they almost immediately rely on the defensive actions and don't allow a lot of space for movement to the opposition before trying to gain back possession. For Loriana's final thoughts, Roberto Di Zerbi undoubtedly is one of the most promising coaches in modern football and his philosophy has been very good in transforming Sassuolo into opponents that no one should underestimate. Sassuolo did have the advantage of focusing only on their Serie A actions, but now at Shakhtar Donetsk, they do also have the league and Europe to focus on and time will only tell how well Roberto Di Zerbi will do at Shakhtar Donetsk. But that there wraps up this tactical analysis, we are now going to go into Football Manager, we're going to look at the recreation, check out the results before ending the video. So let's head over to Football Manager. So here we are, RDS Roberto Di Zerbi 4231. Now, I only did a full season test with Shakhtar Donetsk, given Shakhtar Donetsk are by far the best team in Ukraine. I did also check this in the Premier League, but only with a few games, and I noticed that it is more effective with the counter press. But with Shakhtar Donetsk, I didn't use counter press. So with this tactic, I am going to give you two versions, one without the counter press, and of course, one with counter press. So we are going to go through the team instructions, the player roles and instructions before checking out the results and the training schedules that I did use. So for the team instructions, for the mentality, we are on positive. For the attacking width, we are set to fairly narrow. So mostly we are going to channel our play in central areas. For our approach play, we are going to be playing out from the defense. The passing directness is set to shoot us. So we are keeping the possession and the tempo is set to standard. In the final third, we do have mixed crosses, shoot on target, which De Zerbi and Sassuolo were not afraid to do, and for dribbling in the final third, we are going to be running at the defence. When we are in transition when the possession has been lost, there is no counter press or regroup for the main tactic. When the possession has been won, we are then going to be making our counter movements. With the goalkeeper in possession now, he is going to distribute it to the centre backs. Out of possession, we are using the offside trap with the higher line of engagement and the standard defence line. The defensive width is set to narrow, so we are going to force our opponents on the outside and the pressing intensity is set to more urgent with prevent short goalkeeper distribution. For the player roles and instructions now, for in goal, we do have the sweeper keeper on the defend duty. Both fullbacks on the fullback support duty, they have identical instructions, which is to cross less often, get further forward and stay wider. In central defence, we have two central defenders who are going to be focusing on keeping possession and circulating the ball to either fullbacks or the double pivot. For the double pivot, we are using a deep line playmaker on the defend duty. His instruction is to close down more and his midfield partner, weirdly, is a Carrilero. Now, what I did find with the Carrilero is that when the fullbacks did advance, the Carrilero was in the right position to kind of cover on the left hand side. With the deep line playmaker on the defend duty, he kind of does that on the right hand side too, but not to the same extent that I saw from the Carrilero. That is one of the main reasons I actually chose the Carrilero actually as well. In the attacking midfield areas, on the left, we are using inverted winger on the support duty. He's instructed to shoot less often and stay wider. Now, he's mainly going to stay wider when we are in possession. Once he gets on the ball then, he is going to dribble more and cut inside of the ball, of course, as an inverted winger. On the right side, we are using the Ram Deuter with the instructions of dribble more. In attacking midfield, the support for the striker, we are using an attacking midfielder on the supportive duty. He's instructed to take more risk in possession and also roam from position. When we have the ball, he's going to roam around looking for pockets to be effective. Up front, we are using a deep line forward on the attacking duty and he has no added instructions. And that there wraps up the team instructions, the player roles and the player instructions. We are now going to check the results. So domestically, we absolutely dominated. 
in the league, we played 26 games, we won 24, we drew one, we lost one. That there racks up a win percentage of 92%, if my maths is correct, even 93% one of the two in the UEFA Champions League we did get knocked out in the first round though by FC Bayern Munich which is no surprise and it's also no embarrassment in the Ukrainian Cup our expectation was to win it and of course we were the winners and in the Super Cup I believe because my Ukrainian is not very good we were also the winners in that competition Marlos as you can see down here at the bottom was a very effective player in the system he did actually play as a Ramdoita so big tip if you have a very good goal scoring winger make sure you do use him on the right side so in the league for the league statistics for the points per game Shakhtar 2.81 we scored the most goals 89 which is if my maths is correct again 39 more than Dynamo Kiev for the most shots for we top that list for the fewest shots against we top that list for the best pass completion we top that list with 92% most possession we had the most possession with 60% for the most tackles won because we were on the ball most of the time we didn't actually need to make many tackles so you won't find Shakhtar Donetsk high on this table but when it comes to dribbles made we are first when it comes to clean sheets we are first and when it comes to fewest conceded again <laughs> we are first so we can see for the expected goal Shakhtar Donetsk topped the table with 66.97 we also had the most penalties 12 which highlights the danger in the opponent's penalty box we do overcrowd the penalty box we get many bodies it's too much for the opponents and on a lot of occasions they gave away a penalty for passes completed we came in second with 10,965 for the clear-cut chances created we created 30 which is nine more than the team that came second and for the dribbles per game we topped that list with 3.19 defensively we conceded the least as we've touched on before for the expected goals against we are bottom of that list which is a good thing on 10.81 goals from corners we didn't concede one throughout the whole game for the fouls made we came in well 14th we didn't concede many fouls either for the clean sheets we topped that list well defensively we done very very well now for the player statistics we may not have the top goal scorer but we do have three players coming in second and joined third so we have Marlos with 17 goals we have Sergi with 14 I'm not pronouncing his surname because I don't want to butcher it and we have Junior Moraes with 14 as well for the most assists Marlos again very top player for Shakhtar he had 16 assists our left back had 11 and for the most shots Tyson tops that list for the most man of the match awards Marlos is there for the most key passes Marlos for the best pass completion is our centre backs for the most tackles one again we don't have any plays in that list for the most dribbles made we have Marlos there coming in joint 6 with 14 for the most clean sheets our goalkeeper is there with 18 so now for the team report for the attacking efficiency you can see that we were very aggressive and clinical we manage more shots per match than average and we are more clinical than a lot of teams as well in the league for our defensive efficiency again you guessed it we were quiet and impenetrable we face fewer shots per game than average and we concede fewer goals than would be expected from the number of shots that we faced but how did we score most of our goals 40 were from play shots, 23 were from headers and 16 were from powerful shots. For the assist, 19 were from through balls, 16 were from corners, actually 13 from free kicks. We were very effective on set pieces, for the short passes we're on 7 and for the crosses 10 of our assists came from crosses. But we're now going to check the squad stats, who were the top goal scorers for Shakhtar Donetsk, who were the most assists for Shakhtar Donetsk in all competitions. So for the goals, Marlos scored 28 goals in 33 starts, he played 34 games all in all, that is highly effective, 28 goals and 21 assists is absolutely incredible, he ended the season with an average rating on 7.96, Juno Marais managed to score 18 goals, Sergi our centre back scored 15, Jesus, Solomon managed to get 10 goals as well while Tyson managed to get 8. For the top assist, Marlos of course, our left back with 11, Marcus Antonio our central midfielder on 9, Dodo our right back on 9, Tyson also on 9. With the highest average rated players, Marlos no surprise, our left back and centre back are the top 3 players, Dodo on the right as well is very very key, 
and so too is our attacking midfielder so if i had to tell you which were the key roles which positions you should be focusing on of course is the right wing you will need some good wing backs or full backs whichever way you want to put it one aerial dominant center back as well and of course lastly a very good deep line playmaker so that there is the team report all wrapped up lastly for this video we are going to look at the training schedules that i used throughout the season now for the schedules i didn't actually use one of my own i actually just used the preset so i did use the vertical tiki taka preset as well so when there's one match of course you're going to use the vertical tiki taka one match on the Monday, it's all about physical and ball distribution. Tuesday, play out from the back, transitional press. Wednesday, match tactics and match practice. Thursday is defend and engage, attack and shadow. Friday, attack and patient. Saturday is the match. Sunday is the recovery. When you have two matches during the week, again, vertical tiki taka, two matches. On the Monday is the ball distribution. If your match is on the Tuesday, then you're going to have your match on Tuesday. But if it's on the Wednesday, then you're going to have your match on the Wednesday. And I will just drag the transitional press before the match on the Wednesday. On Thursday or the next day, whenever your match is, make sure you have a recovery. Then on Friday, attack and patient, ready for the match on Saturday, and then recovery again on the Sunday. So that there wraps up this tactical analysis and football manager tactic as well. If you did enjoy this type of content, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. Make sure you leave a comment and also, most importantly, like this video. My name is RDF. Of course, this article was written by Loriana on the Total Football Analysis website. Make sure you go and check it out. The article will be posted in the description below. My name is RDF. I will see you soon. Peace out. Stay safe.